What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it has been um, it's been fun. It's been busy. Got my hair cut and stuff, and got finished doing my live stream and stuff. We'll be live streaming tomorrow for the game. We'll have the Philly 500 meltdown cam, and... Um, Hopefully, he melts down. I'm hoping for an epic failure for the Eagles. I'm hoping that they get blown out. But that's just me. We'll see what happens because it's football. And I don't know. I, I, I wasn't given a copy of the script. Um, interesting thing. Interesting thing um, that's happened. Okay, so it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago today that the Eagles earned their spot to go to the Super Bowl. And that 20 minutes later, Kellen Moore was let go by the Dallas Cowboys. And in that two weeks' time, until yesterday, we hadn't heard anybody say, oh, man, we miss Kellen Moore. We, we wish him the best. We, we don't know why he was let go. We love him. We're going to be, you know, in trouble without him. What was interesting is listening to um, Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith was talking about Kellen Moore, you know, and, and so on, and questioning his offensive play calling. You know, for me, my thing with Kellen Moore is I don't think that it's Kellen Moore does not come up with good plays. I think more of the problem was the lack of experience in big games. Because playing in the playoffs is a different animal than it is playing in regular season games. It's a lot more pressure. It's late in the season. Players are injured. You know, things get tighter. You got to run the ball better. And when I think about the experiences that Kellen Moore has had coming from Boise State, going to the Lions, you know, working under Scott Linehan and Jason Garrett, we are going through with franchises that have not had success in big games and in the playoffs. And the only way you get experience doing that is actually being in them. And this was on the job training, you know, be that as it may, that he's a nice guy. He's likable. He can draw up good plays. There's something about working under pressure. Not everybody can do it. So what I missed in this article where Emmett Smith basically said, you know, Dak is, is fine. You need more weapons and kind of trash Kellen Moore. There was a line in there about Dak Prescott talking about Kellen Moore. And in that, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott said, I'm upset, but I'm happy for him. Referring to Moore's lateral move from Dallas to Los Angeles. That's it. I haven't heard CeeDee Lamb. I haven't heard the offensive linemen. I haven't heard Dalton. I haven't heard anybody on there. You know, when we ended up getting rid of a linebacker's coach, you, you saw my, you heard Micah Parsons go through and, you know, talk about how, you know, much how, how big it was for him and things and how we're going to miss him and things. I'm not sure how well light Kellen Moore was. I know that Dak Prescott and Kellen Moore were friends, but this peer-to-peer -peer coaching, I'm not sure that that was the best thing because, you know, you look at Dak and Kellen Moore, were they even on the same level? Kellen Moore being the backup quarterback, Kellen Moore about the same age as Dak, a couple of years older, that I don't know that you had this respect in the authority like you'd like. And I know from my own personal experience of watching Dan Quinn on the field and the energy and the interaction with the players that he had as a defensive coordinator. And then when I see Kellen Moore, where 
there's nobody really around them, and there's no energy in there that I don't know that the players necessarily responded. The, play, the, the team scored a lot of points. They scored a lot of points. But sometimes you kind of question the way it all went about. Now, what's interesting is, is I, I had, you know, you get all the daggone alerts and stuff on your phones. And this was an article by Fanside, and they were, you know, Dak Prescott is upset by the loss of, um, Kellen Moore and they were going through about, you know, how he's, he'll be okay. The thing about football is it's always changing. This 22 team is done. There's players that you may have known your whole career. They're not going to be back. That guy that was next to the locker with you last year, it's your buddy and everything else. He may not be there. It's constantly evolving and changing and so on. And this is where you look at it and say, yeah, I'm upset about it. He's my friend. You can't help but say, I'm going to miss him, but also wish him well. That doesn't mean that you don't look forward to doing something different. And sometimes here's the problem of, here's the problem that you have when you are working with your friends. It's hard to handle business with friends because because you have a relationship as a friend, it's hard to make hard decisions or make hard calls. And sometimes you overlook things because they're your friend. And you have to understand that this is nothing personal. This is actually business. And sometimes you need somebody to be, to motivate you more than what a friend is. My wife was listening to this um, tape and they were talking about ways of improving yourself. And this is where this kind of struck in. And I got to let my wife know, yeah, I was actually listening, honey. They said, when you surround yourself with people, you know, that you got your friend that she's always, she's got her regular job and she's always complaining about her job and, you know, and then she's complaining about her boyfriend and going on. And this is like every single week that that friend is bringing you down with them as opposed to you having that positive time of doing something productive for you. And that's where you have to be careful with the friends. You want to surround yourself with people of where you want to go. If you're surrounding yourself with people that are just bitching and moaning about their job and not doing anything about it, bitching and moaning about their boyfriend and not doing anything about it, and that's all your friends, you're never going to have the wherewithal or the learning and the knowledge to excel because you're wasting your time down here with all this mindless minutia. And that's where the Cowboys need to surround themselves with coaches that are focused and have had experience that know what they're doing and players as well. You know, when you put together Sears and Kmart and probably a lot of y'all like, what are you talking about? Sears and Kmart? Well, Sears was the biggest department store in the world. Sears and Roebuck catalog, Craftman tools. They were huge. They didn't change. They got old. They started going downhill. Kmart. Kmart was Walmart before Walmart even existed. It was the Kmart blue light special. They were huge. The discount selling store. Then Walmart came through and figured out how to beat the hell out of them. And so Sears and Kmart do, they surround themselves with each other. Now it was Kmart Sears or Sears Kmart. And what you got was two losing businesses that were losing even bigger together. If you want to succeed, surround yourself with people who are succeeding, not ones that don't. All right, good people. It is time for prime time and game time. Oh, check them out. Peace.